Introducing the great Walters National Model Railroad build-off for the year 2022. On this contest, you enter at different levels what you want to do, and you have to purchase this basic bundle of stuff. And the basic stuff has to be in the scene, but you can add anything else you want. So I went to my treasure chest, which is mostly junk, but a few jewels also, to see what I have in there. And I got a whole bunch of stuff out. Keeping in line with the idea of, let's call it a budget project, I went out to check my foam and I didn't have a piece big enough. So I had to glue two pieces together. And by the time the glue was dry, it was pretty flimsy. So I had to put some supports in the back just to make sure it doesn't fall apart. I do want to make my display nice and square and appropriate size. So you get out the tools and start messing them around. And I always take and paint these foam pieces, some neutral color to keep from having the blue show through accidentally. And look at the price of that paint, 250. I love it. Of course, you got to check and then double check after reading the directions of the contest to make sure that you're giving them exactly what's supposed to be. Now, I have these three Walters kits. Two of them came with a bundle and the third one I already had on hand. So what color are they going to be? These Walters kits do come pre-colored, but I like to paint them anyway. It just kind of gets rid of that plastic shine. So it's off to the spray booth. Here we go. Now, I'm not overly burdened with the concept of planning. A lot of my projects are more a process than a plan. So this can go maybe over here and maybe that can go over there. Let's see how that fits. Okay, so here are the three Walters kits that I'm going to build for this project. Let's see which one's first. Hmm, which one? Hmm, I'm going to go with the shed. Now, of course, when you take these parts off of the backing, never break them off ever, ever. Always use your sharp nippers and don't forget to clean up any nubs that might be sticking out because you want to make sure everything fits together. Now, I use a number of different kinds of glue on all of my different projects. I suggest you keep a number of different items on hand. Well, here are all the pieces painted in. For some reason, it just looks like too many parts for one shed. Interesting. We'll see how this works out. Now, of course, when you're putting things together, I like to put as much as possible together while it's still flat and not built into a structure. You can just work on things a lot better, including even like signs and stuff like that. And here's what's left over. Oh, no, look at all those parts. What am I going to do with all these excess parts? Well, I'm going to model by Dennis. We'll see how it works out. Well, just to finish up the shed, I always like to add just a little bit of dusting to it, a little bit of weathering. I don't want it old and worn out. I just want it to look like it's been, well, in use. And what do you think? Came out pretty good. And of course, I hate that empty building look, so I always put something inside. Make sure you can see inside your buildings and show something. Well, moving right along, this is what all the extra bits ended up looking like. This kit bashing is fun. I wasn't exactly sure how it would come out or whether I'd end up using it. And I don't know exactly what the purpose of it is, but it's not a bad little building. And oh no, there's pieces still left over. Wow, talk about a, a lot of pieces. Now, I color my kits a number of different ways. I paint some, I use my dry weathering powders, and don't forget to use your Sharpies. And, oh, wait a minute, I might be wrong, but don't most buildings only have four walls? Why are there five? Well, I'll tell you about that later. Now, this house kit ended up being easy and fun. The only thing that might be difficult were some of the parts are really small, and you want to be really careful about putting all the pieces in, make sure they're nice and straight. While the glue is drying, let's go back out and start working again on the display here, making sure that things will fit together. Of course, what you want to do is you want to fill all the holes and you want to make it nice and smooth. Now, around the edges, there's nothing more real than real. you got to do something with the edges. And what I do is I go out and I gather up some the compost and filter it, use it for gluing on the sides. Now, putting the track on, I do it all in one fell swoop, put some white glue on, put your track right on top of it, put the ballast on, and then of course weight it down to keep it in place. So here are all the parts with only four walls for the house, not five. The fifth wall was, well, you have an option of how you want one end to look. 
Of course, you want to use your handy helpers and make sure everything stays neat and tidy and square while the glue is drying. This is how the house came out. Actually came out quite good. I don't build too many plastic models anymore, but this has actually been a fun project, this whole build off. Okay, I guess there's one place left, the gas station, and it goes together pretty much like the other kits did. Make sure to take your time. The only thing that I found a little tricky is this front wall. It's actually a single piece that you bend and glue together, so you gotta hold it in place. Well, while the glue is drying, let's go back out and work on the diorama. Now, putting the scenic material on, what I do is I just slop a bunch of white glue on, and then I put the scenic on. Must be time to do the roads and then add the extra third track in the back there with the, the bridges. So while that glue is drying, let's go back in and finish our gas station. Now the picture had red trim, but I couldn't find a container of red paint. I couldn't find any, so mine came out yellow. What do you think? Yellow okay? Now I did have a little disagreement with the decals, but I never have been very good at decals anyway. I can't be good at everything. Well, now that we're done with that, let's take it back out and start actually attaching things onto the diorama, the display. And this is really the fun part, putting all the extra stuff, all the detail stuff. There's no such thing in my book anyway of having too much detail in a scene. Well, moving right along, we're almost finished. This has been so much fun. I just love putting all the bits and pieces together. I also like making the little mini scenes. I like thinking, okay, well, why would people be there? What would they be doing? And of course, if you're going to have a farm scene, you got to have farm animals and you got to have stuff. Ah, man, this is starting to turn out really fun, really nice. Of course, part of the bundle was the fence. What do you do with a bunch of fencing? Well, I don't know. I made it for a corral. So here we go. We're all done. This took me about, oh, realistically 40 hours building all the stuff. If I were to rate the difficulty of this project, I would say, oh, it's probably dead center of intermediate. I would say most every modeler that's built many things before would be able to do this. And I really encourage you guys, if you didn't do the 2021 or the 2022 build off, which I was a little late in the uptake on the 21, so I didn't make that one, but I did this one. If you didn't do one of these, or both of them, I strongly suggest you think about doing it in the future. The 2023 build-off will be happening before long. And look at all the fun we had with this. I love building the structures, I love building the display, and more than anything else, I really enjoy the idea of having a creative outlet, being able to build my own little world. Am I gonna keep this display? Oh, probably not. I'll probably take it all apart again, use the pieces for next year maybe. But I just love figuring out more detail, more detail. How can I make it more real? Well, you guys have fun with your hobby. And certainly I'm looking forward to what yours looks like next year. And if nothing else, well, dream about it, think about it. I find it's as much fun thinking about as actually doing. That's all what a hobby is all about. So until next time, see you guys. Here I am, happy with my display, busily making it better. There's no such thing as finishing a hobby. If you finish a hobby, then you got to go out and find another one. Have fun, folks. Come back and see me again sometime. Bye-bye.